Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. This is my third video from this chapter, and we're going to be talking about how to use triple integrals to compute the mass of a three-dimensional region. So for this first example here, we're going to bring back a cube that you might remember from the first video in this chapter. Um, in that video, we computed the volume of this cube by taking the triple integral of one over our given region. Now, uh, what we're going to look at next is how to interpret a triple integral that has an integrand other than one. So in this case, the triple integral of some function f of x, y, z, dz. And at first, that might seem like a very difficult concept because um, f of x, y, z lives in four dimensions. And so trying to, uh, you know, think about, you know, an analog to think about when we're in the 2D integral case the double integral of f of x y dA over a two-dimensional region, we were thinking about some surface floating over a boundary region and kind of calculating the volume that's trapped between the surface and the region on the xy plane. Um, that doesn't extend very well uh, to triple integrals because in that case, f of x y z lives in four-dimensional space and what does it really mean uh, to measure the four-dimensional volume trapped between a four-dimensional uh, hypersurface and three-dimensional space. That's a very confusing concept, right? And so we don't really want to use that as our frame of reference for what the triple integral of f of x, y, z, dz means. And so instead, here's something that will give you much better intuition. Uh, what I like to do is I like to pretend that f of x, y, z is a density function, and I like to pretend that my three-dimensional region is made out of various different materials of varying density. So maybe in some places this cube is really heavy because it's made out of lead, and, and in other places the cube is a lot lighter because it's made out of aluminum or titanium or something, and maybe you know in between we have some mixture between those metals. And so what that would be is a cube of varying density, and we know that if we accumulate density over a three-dimensional region, we're going to get the mass of that three-dimensional region. So that gives us a frame of reference and intuition for these sorts of problems that I think will be a lot, uh, just a lot easier to sink our teeth into. So let's give this a try here. So in this case, if we pretend that the density of this cube is x squared y to the fourth at any given point inside the cube, to compute the mass of this three-dimensional region, we take the triple integral over our region and we get uh, 128 over 15 grams. And that would be the quote unquote mass of our cube. Now you're gonna see a lot of problems where they don't explicitly tell you that f of x, y, uh, f of x, y, z is a density function um, because the problem is abstracted. It's not actually about density and mass. However, what I will say is you can write some pretty good explanations for your triad problems if you say things like, um, even though this problem isn't explicitly about mass um, density and mass, if we think of f of x, y, z as a function describing the density at each point, each point in the region, then this triple integral would describe the mass of this 3D region. Um, that might get you some mileage in your explanations. So in general, you guys are going to be seeing quite a few triple integrals with an integral. Uh, so the triple integral of f of x, y, z, um, dv, or dx, dy, dz. Um, in certain situations, it might make sense to stay in XYZ space to compute your integral. And if that's the case, you should stay in XYZ space. Like if it's a, already a rectangular prism, I would stay in XYZ. However, just like the previous videos, there will be times that it will make sense to move over to a new coordinate space to use a change of variables where X gets replaced with X of UVW, Y with Y of UVW, Z with Z of UVW. And then, of course, you need your Jacobian determinant, your volume conversion factor. Um, so this is something that will extend to problems that have an integrand f. So the previous examples we looked at were just for volume calculations. Totally fine to do this with a function f of x, y, z that's not equal to 1 as your integrand, as long as you remember to both plug in for x, y, and z with your change of variables and you have to include the absolute value of your volume conversion factor, and then that should work out pretty well. And in general, when you guys are trying to give an explanation 
of what your triple integral of f really is, um, trying to frame this in terms of a problem with uh, f is a function describing the density and the triple integral gives you the mass of your 3D region, that should give you a good jumping off point for um, writing up some triad problems, um, but also just to give yourself some, some sort of concrete intuition about how to interpret a triple integral with an integrand. All right, so let's try one more here. Uh, this is the same parallel piped that we saw in a previous video. Um, remember, it's the space that's trapped between six planes, each two of which are parallel. So these two planes are parallel, then these two planes are parallel, and then the last two planes are also parallel, hence the name parallel piped. All right, so we're doing the same calculation as the previous video uh, when we had this parallel piped. Um, the only thing that I've changed up is we are not finding the volume of the parallel piped because we have an integrand here that's not equal to one. So in this case, it's no longer a volume calculation, but you could think of it as a mass calculation. We are accumulating the varying density throughout this region to compute the mass of this parallel piped. So um, I could take stuff from that previous example. So I'm just gonna go through here and um, get my change of variables from the previous video, um, the limits of integration from the previous video, and then when we solve for x, y, and z in terms of u, v, and w, um, I can grab that from the previous video as well. Even my volume conversion factor, I'm not going to recompute that Jacobian determinant. I'm just gonna take that from the previous video. All right, so now that we have all of it, um, we just go ahead and set up our triple integral. Um, nice thing here is that our limits of integration are all constants, meaning that in this UVW coordinate space, this parallel piped is now a rectangular prism in UVW space. A um, couple other things, uh, because it is a parallel piped, our volume conversion factor is a constant here. So we just plug in one third for that. And then the only thing that's really new in this example is uh, 9y is going to become 9 times y of uvw. We're going to have to do a little bit of substituting here. So y of uvw is this 2v plus w over 3. We're going to have to plug that in for y. So let's do that right now. There it is. And now this is a pretty straightforward triple integral that you guys will know how to compute on your own. Um, so when you run the numbers there, um, you could do a little bit of simplifying first, and your final answer, you're get, going to get 132. Now, uh, technically speaking, this problem doesn't say anything about mass or volume or density or anything, and so we would just report an answer of 132. This, this triple integral equals 132. But if you're trying to write a nice explanation or help yourself frame what's going on here, thinking of it as a parallel piped made out of materials with varying density, we can interpret this 132 as the mass of the parallel piped. Even though that's not literally true, that will really help you get a handle on this sort of material. All right, guys, that is the uh, final slide for this video. So thanks so much for tuning in. And then uh, we have one more video left. I'm going to introduce the idea of cylindrical coordinates, um, which is really a preview of next chapter where we're really going to dive into um, three-dimensional versions of polar coordinates. Uh, so next chapter, we'll be talking about spherical coordinates and cylindrical coordinates. Um, in my next video for this chapter, though, we're just going to do a brief introduction to cylindrical.